now that we have had a bit of a play with Vapor, we need to dig into some of the basics of HTTP before going further. What it is, how it works, and talk about the parts that we need to know about to build great Vapor apps. If you are already familiar with how the web works, then feel free to skip this video. HTTP, or Hypertext Transfer Protocol, is what the web is built on. Whether it is you visiting your favorite website, using iOS apps, or watching movies on your TV over the internet, the chances are you are using HTTP. We are all probably fairly familiar with some of the core concepts as we use them hundreds of times a day. When you type a URL into your browser, your browser makes an HTTP request to the site to get the web page. When developing iOS apps, most of you will have used URL session or a library like Alamo Fire to make requests to external services to get or save data. The way it works at a high level is actually really simple. The client, whether that be your iOS app or a web browser, will make a request to the server. The server receives that request and then will return some sort of a response. An HTTP request will contain a number of pieces of information. At the very least, it will contain a host, which is the server to send the request to, and a path which tells the server what it is trying to do. The request will also contain the HTTP method it will use and the HTTP version. While Vapor supports both HTTP 1.1 and HTTP 2, for this course we will only be working with HTTP 1.1, and you don't need to worry about the differences at this point. It could contain some request data, depending on the HTTP method, as well as various other headers. The HTTP method tells the server what kind of operation it wants to perform. The most common HTTP method is the GET method. When you type a URL into your browser, it will send an HTTP GET request to the server to get the contents of the web page. Another common HTTP method is the POST method, and this is used to send data to the server. For instance, if you're registering on a website through a form, the web page will tell the browser to send the information using a POST request. So when you click Submit, it will create an HTTP POST request with the data in the request body. There are a number of other HTTP methods, and we'll cover those when we need them. Other information can be sent with the request via request headers. These could include things like cookies, which will tell the server who the user performing the request is, or the accept header, which tells the server what type of content the client can accept. This can be really useful, and Vapor uses it in its inbuilt error middleware. If there is an error, it will check the, this header to see what type of response to send. If the client accepts HTML, then it is probably a browser, so Vapor will return an HTTP error page. If it is an iOS app, it will probably only accept JSON, so Vapor will return an error inside some JSON. The HTTP response will be returned once the server has dealt with the request. First and foremost, the response will contain a status code. This tells the client what the outcome of the request was. They can generally be broken down into five different groups. Anything beginning with a 1 is an informational response, though you won't see these that often. Anything beginning with a 2 indicates a success, so a 200 OK status code means the request was handled successfully. Anything beginning with a 3 indicates a redirection, and we will use these quite a lot. Anything beginning with a 4 indicates a client error. We will have all seen the different and fun 404 not found pages. Finally, anything beginning with a 5 indicates a server error. This can happen when something goes wrong. There are loads of status codes, most of which you probably won't ever use, but there are some amusing ones in there as well, including a 418 I'm a teapot, which was introduced as an April Fool's joke. As well as the status code, you will usually get a response body. If you are requesting a web page, then you will get the HTML content in the response body. There will also probably be some headers set on the response. These will indicate things like how long the response body is, or they could be to set a cookie in the browser. Hopefully that whirlwind tour of the basics of HTTP should help you understand the concepts and terms that will crop up over the coming videos. At least you may now know what it means when Google tells you that you are a teapot.